Good evening, folks. Triple Crown here coming to you from Vancouver, British Columbia. This is a round eight summary operation dark winter for the KMT and the United States. But first, before we get into talking about the turn, just want to clarify some things for the for everyone who's watching and so they have an understanding of the rules. Now, first thing we'll talk about is the annexation of Turkey. How does that happen? And there was a couple of rules that came up in our gameplay and I just thought I'd put them out there. And that is, so all of the ter there cannot be any Axis territories uh, in, in Africa and that, that is not including Vichy. So all of the North African territories are under allied control and the other thing the other part, this, as is written in the rule book, is the allies also have to control Greece, but it does not talk about the islands of Crete and Corinth. And so is it all of Greece? Is it, is it the islands as well? So it, it wasn't clear. And this is from the original. So we're just kind of adding upon this. So what we're going to say is to annex Turkey or for Turkey to become pro-allied the Allies have to control Greece, but Corinth or Crete have to either be under Allied control or pro-Allied. They cannot be under Axis control. So just to clarify that point, the other thing was coastal artillery or coastal guns. So just to clarify, coastal guns only participate when an amphibious attack is occurring. Now, if the Americans are going to attack the sea zone here with these Italian boats, the coastal gun here in Gibraltar uh, does not get to fire if the only thing that's occurring here is a naval battle, okay? And something else that happened was a coastal gun fired in the Battle of Bordeaux. And thank you to um, uh, Captain or Commander Eisenhower, uh, who participated in D-Day last turn with the British, so... Uh, well done, uh, Hilltop Hillbox. But anyways, to talk about coastal guns here in this scenario was the American brought all their Navy across with the British and how a coastal gun works is the coastal gun fires at ships that are participating in the amphibious attack. And ships that are participate or, or that are, are capable of participating in an amphibious attack are battleships. They do coastal bombard. Cruisers, they also can participate in coastal, a coastal bombardment in the same with destroyers. So it ha can only be ships that are participating in the uh, amphibious attack in addition to naval transports. So in, in this scenario here, they attacked Bordeaux, uh, they rolled some dice. Now it is the attacker who decides which casualties they are. Now, if the only casualty that can be selected is a naval transport, well, that is the casualty. So that's why it's important to bring escorting ships in and participate in coastal bombardment to avoid losing naval transports. And these naval transports would be lost before the units are able to disembark. So just to clarify that point. And the other point was, well, because um, uh, a torpedo boat which could not participate in a coastal bombard was selected as casualty, that cannot occur. So, um, so the damage was applied to a battleship. And the other thing that I forgot to mention was over here, Hilltop Pillbox upgraded. He had a military base in Alexandria and he paid 8 IPP to upgrade it to a minor IC. Now, uh, how this works is similar to when you upgrade a minor IC to a major, you're still able to produce three units. Now the same sort of concept applies to the, when you upgrade a military base, which produces one in infantry to a minor IC, you're still able to produce a minor IC or one unit that turn. So not, not but if you're to downgrade from a major IC to a minor IC, you can still produce three units. So just to clarify all that stuff, um, so folks at home can understand that Captain G and I were messaging back and forth and we're saying that, uh, joking, we wanted to get this these rules right, so we don't want people fighting at home. 
<laughs> Anyways, hopefully um, those you select to play games with, it doesn't end up in those scenarios, but uh, sometimes these things happen. So uh, let's get into the KMT. They have 17 IPP to spend, saving two. Uh, so spending 15 and purchasing five infantry, no battles to declare, uh, all non-combat movement. So let's uh, we'll move the camera over. So currently sitting here in Quang Si is 23 infantry. They are all going to move one space into Hong Kong. So they are joining the other six KMT units that are there. They're also going to be joined by a AAA from Quang Si. And the cavalry is going to back up to Hainan from Quang Si. And the artillery is going to back up into Hainan as well as the light armor. Now the range on those aircraft makes me nervous. So the, air, the aircraft from Sichuan is going to move into Hainan. And now it comes to placement of units. We are going to place two units in Kuang Si. And three units into Yunnan. So three units are being placed in Yunnan. So the KMT save two, they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve. Twelve in territories, a five and a bonus for having the Burma Road open. So that's uh, 17 and they save two. So they are at 19 IPP going into round number nine. And next we'll talk about America, the United States. And the United States has 103 IPP to spend, purchasing one minor industrial complex, a battleship, one attack transport, and four regular transports, they're all six IPP, two Marines, there is four four infantry and four medium tanks. So enough to load exactly 10 naval transports. Uh, there's three battles to declare. Two of them are walk-ons. So we will pan over in this direction. So over here in off the coast of Brazil, one naval transport is gonna load one American and one Brazilian who's now under flying under the flag of the United States is going to move. Ooh. I guess it's going to have to be that way. To this C zone here, C zone 53. And one is going to get off into West Africa, the other into Rio de Oro. So these are currently Vichy French territories and they are now under. American control. So that is the first walk-on. So it didn't, we're not rolling any dice there, so not a big deal. Um, the other one is the battle for Sea Zone 35, and we discussed that coastal guns do not fire. Well, we were not doing an amphibious attack on, well, we can't because we don't have any units to, but uh, the coastal gun does not fire when we're attacking Sea Zone 35. So from Sea Zone 33, one destroyer and two naval submarines are coming in. Also, that attack is supported by a medium bomber coming from Azores from an air base. And the Americans do get to use this air base. So one, two, three, and it will have four spaces remaining in its fuel gauge. So we have five dice at four coming in against one submarine at two and one destroyer at a four. So we get to roll some dice. And as Captain G coined it, the Afghan battle arena, because we put our dice tray box at the 
border of Afghanistan. So this person gets to watch every single dice roll as a, as a good Samaritan and judge of fairness and equality. And, and, and uh, but maybe this, uh, our friend here does not like uh, the number seven because our friend Captain G seems to have an issue with rolling sevens. So um, anyways, we'll leave that there. Um, but here we go. So we have, uh, I said four dice at four. So we have two submarines and a destroyer. Medium bomber rolls two at four, and defending we have we have one at two and one at four. So we'll roll them all together, make it nice and simple. And of course, our destroyer has to survive to see the submarine, and nobody gets a surprise uh, a, a strike here or attack. And every oh, we had one hit. We rolled a number. We rolled a one up there. So I'm assuming they are going to lose. Uh, they rolled a 10 and a six, their uh, submarine. So submarine's gone, continue into round two. We roll five dice and they roll one at four for the destroyer. And we rolled a three, a one, and they rolled a four. So we will lose a submarine and they will lose their uh, lone surviving destroyer. Now comes non-combat movement and something else that I, now that we're talking about non-combat movement, so uh, anything, this is the US Navy here, that's all sitting in, with, combined with the British Navy in C Zone 28. Now anything that participated in the D-Day attack does not get to go on the subsequent US turn, but the US uh, battleship is sitting at a naval port, so I forgot, it does actually repair. So the battleship, is now healed. Very nice that that is the occurrence. Now, if America had taken that territory, I don't know if that would actually occur. That probably has to be clarified. If America takes Bordeaux on their D-Day, does it repair on the next turn if it's American controlled? Don't know how I, too much to think about right now. Um, but anyway, so this uh, medium bomber has four left in its fuel gauge. The one, two, three, Four, it's also gonna land in Bordeaux, which is, uh, there's currently currently now 23 units. This is the uh, Allied, combined Allied invasion. We've got one Canadian there, a bunch of British, and a bunch of American forces now. It makes me feel good every time I think about uh, D the D-Day. So uh, we've got also a tactical bomber in Azores. It's going to fly one, two, three, four, and it's gonna be joining uh, landing in Bordeaux, and there's also a tactical bomber sitting in Washington, and it's going to fly one, two, three, four, five, and it is going to land also in Bordeaux. So that leaves a couple more non-combat movements. So the coastal battleship, and we've changed the way coastal battleships move. So coastal, all coastal ships now they move one space. From a naval base, they move two. Simple as that. It was so confusing that staying along coastal territories, blah, 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 I could never figure it out. Uh, is it around an island? Is it not? Sometimes it's touching. It doesn't make any sense. So uh, we fix it. So anyways, this uh, ship here is moving from a naval base one and two into sea zone 34. So when we move one and two, to sea zone 34. This naval transport staying put, however, our two Brazilian friends that are left behind are going to annex Porto Velo and Curibiata. So now all of Brazil is under American control. America does not uh, annex, and the only country that happens for is Finland. When you, there's multiple territories and you annex the capital, you do not automatically get all the other territories. You have to walk into them individually, which takes a little bit of time, which don't love it, but that, that, is, that is the rule. So, um, so that is all of the, all of the moves. And you know what? I forgot to purchase a, an infantry for Brazil, for the Philippines, but when it comes to placement, I'm, I'm, I'm going to short myself one infantry 
to place in eastern United States. I'm going to, I am going to put one infantry in the Philippines, so just remember that now. Um, yes, anyways, so we will go to place units, and we are leaving one infantry behind, obviously, to place in the Philippines, but we are placing a battleship over here in C-Zone 25, a attack transport and four regular transports all in c-zone 25 off of the east coast of the united states ready to go reinforce the americans currently sitting in france and we will place four medium tanks two marines and three regular infantry and while i'm here uh, I just thought about this now. From the Pacific, we can rail one infantry from the Pacific, from the Southwest. It's going to rail all the way across the United States to New England. So we still can do our full complement of landing and still place an infantry in the um, Philippines. So that leaves to place over here. We have a minor industrial complex and uh, one infantry. So one infantry is going to be placed in the Philippines, which we need to remember to do every turn. And the minor industrial complex is being placed in San Francisco. It's no longer called San, San Frangima or whatever Captain G was calling it is, is been back to its rightful name of San Francisco. And it feels good to be placing that there. And also the tactical bomber is going to be flying, flying from the Midwest up to, sorry, I forgot to do this as a non-com, up to San Francisco. I thought it was uh, still there. So that is it for the United States and the KMT. Short turn, lots of explaining, but uh, the Hilltop Pillbox did most of my moves last turn. So in terms of income, the United States is being convoyed uh, over here in this C zone here, so they're going to be minus 10. Also, this convoy zone off of Alaska. So whatever their income is, um, and they're minus two for Alaska, sorry, two for Hawaii. I don't think Midway's worth anything. Guam is worth one, so they're minus three. So they are minus 13, so they are 92. And they have Mexico and Baja, so 94. 95, 96, 97, 98, and they have Rio de Oro, so 99. So the United States is at 99 uh, IPP next turn.